If you've ever been to a gynecologist, you've likely experienced the use of the modern speculum, a 1840s invention of Dr. J. Marion Sims. Now, what you might not know is that while everybody was hooping and hollering and praising the so-called father of gynecology, this man was torturing hundreds of black women, many of them who were enslaved. Now, of course we know, enslaved black women were property, and therefore, they didn't have the right to consent or deny anything that was happening to their bodies. I am A.B. Tucker, and this is Ill Will, a five-part series dedicated to examining and exposing the long history of gross medical mistreatment targeting black women around the world. J. Marion Sims was a white man who, during times where black people were enslaved in America, he purchased black women so that he could perform these gynecological experiments on them. What's really important is that he did them without any sort of anesthesia, without any sort of medicine to make them feel less pain, even though he was performing the experiments at a time when pain medication was a part of medicine. At the time, Sims believed a widely circulated, deeply harmful stereotype rooted in racism and ignorance. During the time when Black women were enslaved, there was this really dominant view that they did not feel pain. So it justified white slave owners doing things like whipping them or raping them or beating them because it was, you aren't human in the same way as white women, so you don't feel this kind of pain. You have thicker skin, you have different nerve endings. Um, they even thought that our blood was different. And it's also important to note that when J. Marion Sims performed these same interventions on white women, he then did use anesthesia. This thinking still reverberates today. A recent study published in the Journal of General Internal Medicine revealed that white patients who complain of pain are 26% more likely than black patients to receive effective pain medications. A lot of times what becomes history is no longer history, it just becomes reshaped into how we currently think about black women. It, it just sort of transforms into how we talk about black women and what kind of care we do or do not give them. And oftentimes we give them less care because of these historical beliefs. Sims would gain recognition as a medical pioneer, publishing his findings without ever acknowledging the true cost of his exploitation of black women. Vaginal fistulas is a disorder that Sims wanted to find out more information about. And so that was the purpose of him purchasing these enslaved black women. Anarka, Betsy, and Lucy are three of the many black women in Alabama who were treated by Sims for vaginal fistulas. A debilitating condition likely caused by being forced to become breeders for their owners. When black women were enslaved in America, it was really important for white slave owners to use their bodies to make sure that they could make a profit by creating more enslaved people. Now, despite having a total disregard for black female humanity, Sims would have a half dozen statues of his likeness erected in his honor, including a nine foot bronze sculpture that stood in New York City's famous Central Park for decades. Now, granted, the statue was removed in April of 2018, but the agonizing history still remains. I did a fellowship at the University of South Carolina where there was a statue of him that was then had red paint by those who were protesting the, his statue. And so you really see this disconnect between him being uplifted, again, giving the very you know big deal name of father of gynecology, but at the same time, how he got that title was not through uh, compassionate means. It was through him seeing black women as less than human. Anarka, who was only 17 years old at the time of her first procedure, would ultimately be subjected to 30 experimental surgeries. There are countless other women who face the same injustice and indignity whose names we will never know. One important thing that we get from his experiments on women like Anarka and Lucy, those are just some of the women's names, is the speculum. And so any woman who has gone to a gynecology appointment has probably seen the speculum. And so that's something that we get from J. Marion Sims uh, performing these experiments on black women. And why don't we celebrate the women that underwent these experiments? Because they gave us the information. Why don't we talk about them? Why don't we know their names? Why aren't they called the mothers of gynecology in medical school textbooks and in, in the bioethics textbooks? This is Ill Will. 
an examination of the gross medical mistreatment of black women and how this history shaped the healthcare crisis that we're facing today.